Okay, I started on a project here. I should have started my video earlier. I'm installing a battery switch here. What this is going to do is allow me to run off of or start off of two different batteries here or it'll allow me to charge different batteries. So this battery here is the one that I run all my electronics off of, my lights, my fish finders, things like that. So a lot of times when I'm fishing at night, I stay out for a long time from running the fish finders and leaving my lights and stuff on. I don't want to drain the battery down. I've never done it yet, but uh, I'd rather be on the safe side. So what I'm gonna do is put the switch on. And this would be the lead coming from the boat motor. I'm gonna feed it in here. And then I've made up some short cables. I actually made these out of jumper cables. You can go buy heavy cable if you want, but I've had jumper cables here. So what I'm gonna do is put these on. One will go to this battery. One will come off the other tab and go to the far battery. The wiring diagram shows a lot of different ways of doing it, but none of them shows it the way I'm gonna do it, but I'm confident it'll work. And all I'm gonna do is jump my grounds together so I'll still be doing what I'm needing to do with this switch and at night when I'm running or daytime I'll normally use battery one as my starting battery but if I'm out at night and I'm afraid I'm gonna put a little bit of drain on the battery for my electronics and stuff then I'll just flip it over on two that way I'm charging it. And if it starts giving me problems with my fish finders, because sometimes you can pick up interference off the boat motor, especially on startups, a lot of times it can trip your fish finder, send them back to start mode again, so you have to go back through your program and get where you were. But should I have a drain on one battery or on going bad or whatever, I can always put it on both too and that'll give me the cranking power of both batteries, which I don't see, or I'll never need that, but that option's there. And we'll going have the boat off for a while. Flip it to off, that way there's no, no drain on the battery. So, uh, like I said, I started on this. I should have started filming earlier. I bought these terminal ends here from auto parts store use jumper cable and I put them on there and pounded these down and center punched them so they can't pull out then I soldered them in to make sure the connection stays good and I'm going to follow it up my connection with you can use either one of these you got a electric silicone compound here Don't forget when you're doing something like this to mark your hot leads with some kind of a red tape. That way if you're switching batteries out or doing something in the dark out on the boat or whatever, you don't get confused with which are your hot leads and which aren't. Um, I've got this mounted now. I'm going to go ahead and get all these wires ran, put on where I want, and organize everything. As you can see, it's a mess in here. I want to neaten everything up, tidy it up a little bit, strap things down, and well, I'm at it. These fuses here, the old ground type, I don't care for those. They're getting more expensive and harder to find. I want to go to these types, so I bought a bunch of these inline fuses. I'll just go ahead and switch these out, cut my wires and crimp these in, and once I get all that done and everything tidied up in here, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I uh, dressed it up a little bit in there, the wiring, and tried to make it a little neater, cleaned out everything. 
a little cleaner now than it was before. Switch is mounted. Um, all the connections, it's got compound on them. And when you're doing something like this, I recommend using this like on your fish finders and all your connections on everything. Make it waterproof up there because you never know when you're going to catch a wave wrong or get caught in the rain. And it doesn't hurt to have a little protection against the water on all of your electrical stuff. And as far as these go, I didn't put them on because I changed my mind. I think I'm going to see if I can locate some of these and put on everything. They're actually a circuit breaker. If something goes wrong, they'll trip. And this will be sticking out and you just reset it. So I kind of like that idea. And I don't have to carry the fuses around then. Make it a lot, lot better and a lot safer if I can get the right right amperage I need for them. I, don't, I haven't checked into it yet to see if they sell these in a variety of amps but if they do that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put a row of those in and wire everything through breakers but when I get to that part I'll try to update you on it all right I'm back I'm going to show you what I accomplished on it I got my switch hooked up so got one wire running over, it's going to my starting battery. Another one comes over and goes to my auxiliary battery. So, if I would run, say my auxiliary battery would start going dead. If I've been running like my depth finders and uh, other things, charging up cell phones and different things and, and ran it down, then all I've got to do is flip this from the number one battery over to the number two and then when the boat motor's running I'll be putting a charge back into that battery um, if I had both batteries weak for some reason flip the switch on to the where it says both and I could start off of both or I can charge on both then I don't know if you can see it put in circuit breakers for all of my bilge pump, marriators and all that. So if something goes wrong, those pop instead of having to dig around and change fuses. As you can see, I definitely cleaned up the compartment in here. Got the wires nice and neat. Everything's kind of organized. Now these right here that still got fuses in, they're going to be changed, but all they are is they're for the onboard charger which only you know is for when I'm charging at home as most people know what they are but out on the water it's not going to mean anything these fuses won't be working nothing will but I'm still going to change them to these type fuses get a little reset on them so it's kind of a circuit breaker of its own it's not an actual fuse so if something goes wrong it'll just trip it and I'll reset it then up going up to the front of the boat I put in this circuit breaker here that's actually on everything it's just a second protection and also can be used like I just did there to kill the power on everything up front if I need to work on or do something it's an easy like kill switch but that's what I've done to clean everything up back here organize it a little bit and eliminate all the fuses because this, this had flat fuses it had round bus fuses it had uh, a combination of sizes of fuses it had the short round ones long round ones your flat blade fuses they call them so now rather than having to carry all these different types of fuses with me everything's on circuit breakers and then I'll show you real quick up front what I added Okay, on my put in this switch panel for lights and they've all got a circuit breaker on them so there's no fuses on anything up there all the lights are protected by circuit breakers 
and I even have one on I added this where you can charge I can charge two things at a time off of here keep an eye on my voltage there and it's protected with a circuit breaker and of course I still got the end dash cigarette lighter which I've got a charger I can plug in there to if I would need three USB chargers or uh, power something up like my GoPros get low on me on power when I'm out on the water I can charge them real quick there and uh, charge cell phone uh, I've got a headlamp that I put on at night and it can be charged out of here too so everything now has been switched over eliminated all my fuses and went to circuit breakers on everything so that's that's my upgrades I've done here's the just got to get my boat cleaned back up now but I can put this in and again here we can see it just got another USB spot there and still have two places to plug in something else like a spotlight or something like that so it's coming together making everything a little easier and a little simpler but I'm going to try a few more tricks little add-ons and I'll keep you up to date on those thanks for watching Okay, just wanted to show you what all you're going to need to tackle something like this, because it is a little uh, somewhat in-depth, so uh, first of all you're going to need at least a 60 amp panel box, you're going to need some double pole breakers, um, you're going to need at least one speaker, uh, coat hanger, blue one, and a right hand mirror. It needs to be chrome. That's very important. Uh, 220 plug and a box of blueberry waffles. And then you're going to need a big mixing spoon. That's enough. Don't laugh at me. This is serious business. <laughs> okay, seriously, folks. Here's some of the items you're going to need. Um, so this is a fuse holder for a uh, irregular flat fuses, uh, blade fuses, some people call them. You can get these at hard, about any hardware store, any place that has automotive stuff. Uh, you have your favorite automotive place. I didn't use but a couple of these, but I ended up eliminating them. And I think I have one on my onboard charger which only works when I'm at the house charging um, <clears throat> these same way you can get these at auto parts store but you'll need a variety of different connections uh, to make your connections some of your terminals you can pick those up at any place that sells electrical stuff and a lot of this stuff can all be purchased off of Amazon uh, I got these off of Amazon These are the little push button breakers, resettable. And you want to order them by, try to match them up to the size you need based on the fuses you're going to replace because they, they do have the amperage written on them. These are both five, but you can get them in different amperage sizes. I bought a variety of them. Um, 
these, if you're not going to switch over to the other type circuit breakers, these are a little expensive, but I also got these off of Amazon. They go in in place of your blade fuse, as you can see. And should something go to fault or ground, you've got a little circuit breaker here that will pop out. And all you got to do is push it back in. They, that will save you from having to change fuses, but as you can see, they'll fit in these blade type holders. So that makes for a nice upgrade if you're trying to get away from fuses. Nothing like trying to troubleshoot electrical problem out on the water and running out of fuses or not having any fuses. Circuit breakers save all that. Here's a big one. These would be used more for like on your trolling motor. And again, they're, they're resettable. Now, I used one for all my main power I showed you in the video for uh, everything up front, all my controls and stuff. And all I'm doing is using it for a uh, like a disconnect rather than have to go back and unhook everything off the battery when I'm wiring or troubleshooting something up front. I can just reach back and opens the circuit so I don't have any anything powered up. And it just that saves time having to unwire everything from your battery. Um, and those come in different sizes. Amperage, but you can't get them in a low amperage like this, so that's all they're good for is like a load for a trolling motor or using them for a disconnect. You have to stay with the little circuit breakers for everything else. And this is something you need to get it's cheap. You can get it in auto parts stores and stuff. And all it is is you can run your wire through, keep your wires all nice and neat, rather than have a whole bunch of spaghetti strung out under your dash or up through the side of your boat. You can keep it all concealed in this. Makes it nice and neat. Uh, a lot of this stuff can be found on Amazon. Uh, I got some of mine off of Amazon. I got some at auto parts stores. If you're wanting to get everything at once, that's the way I would probably do it. I, this was a slow off and on project, so if I was going to just jump into it and do it as a big project, I would just get on Amazon, get a list of everything I need, find it on there, order it all at once, and get it over with rather than running around shopping looking for stuff. Um, I hope you found this information beneficial to you in some way. and. Uh, Hope it helps you out. Uh, if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments down there. Um, if you like this video and want to see more, please click the like on it. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And until I get out on the water or see you again, tight lines and bent rods to everyone. Thanks for watching.